Well, this is the GTN show, and this week I'm going to kick things off with a rather exciting unboxing. Though, unfortunately, this one isn't up for grabs, but it is quite special. So, let's get unboxed. It's our new presenter! Oh, Mark! Well, I am delighted to finally have Fraser in on GTN and joining us for the show this week, having teased us for the last couple of months with your occasional appearances, but you are finally joining us officially, having done your last pro race at IMA 70.3 at Los Cabos in Mexico. How did that go? Yeah, I mean, thanks, Mark. It's good to be here finally. Yeah, um, it, was, um, it was enjoyable. Um, that was probably the first time I've really raced, but not really raced, if that makes sense. Just got through swim, bike, run without digging too deep. Just wanted to, yeah, have a smile, get through it and enjoy the process of, yeah, last race in a pro sense, at least for me. So, no, it's good. And that's a line in the sand and looking forward to challenges ahead. Fantastic. Well, on that note, I did read a study over the weekend. I feel like this is really good timing because it was actually looking at former athletes and particularly professional athletes and how they go through these changes within their sure. lifestyle and self-definition as they retire from sports. Now, having, looking, having looked at these pro athletes, what they found was that actually their nutrition and actually their activity reduced and declined below that of non-athletes. Now, I compared it against athletes at the time and non-athletes. But interesting to see that a professional athlete that has been so dedicated and made a lot of sacrifices over the years actually goes almost totally the opposite way to the point that they're just binging out on pizzas, drinking beer, whatever. Yeah, I mean, it, it almost seems counterintuitive that you can be so healthy and tuned to everything that goes into your body to go polar opposite and go the other way. But we've both seen it, it definitely happens. Not to say every athlete goes down that route. I'm yet to find out which way I hopefully I have to be careful. But um, I can imagine how you can go down the whole, you know, seafood diet, see it, eat it, um, <laughs> just get it down the throat. I think um, it is interesting, the whole psychology behind between I'm done now and I've had to be restricted for however long I've been doing whatever sport you're doing. It doesn't happen to just be triathlon. Um, well, well, we best keep getting you down to the gym yeah. and just keep it going then. Yeah, I'll, yeah, at least once a, once a week maybe. maybe. Well, another pro triathlete that has announced his retirement from the sport is Cameron Dye, arguably one of the most successful short course non-drafting athletes to date, or at least in the last sort of five to 10 years. He, well, he's hung his goggles up. Yeah, I mean, he's had an incredible career, Mark, absolutely. I mean, I've um, luckily spent a bit of time training and I suppose I've raced a little bit against Cam too. Um, yeah, just, just a fantastic athlete and really, really impressive over that short Olympic distance in particular. He dabbled a little bit in half Ironman, but no, he really found his forte in, he, in the Olympic. I mean, he was phenomenal on the bike. Yeah. I do remember some of the bike splits he posted were through the roof, but I mean, he really focused on the Lifetime Series. 5150, which has kind of fizzled out in itself anyway. So that, so that Olympic distance, non-drafting sort of racing, which kind of is becoming no more, sadly. And he dabbled a little bit in the Super League, which is coming along now, but you know, that really is geared towards your IT really fast athletes. Yeah, so, so I do wonder whether with this kind of racing coming to an end, sadly, maybe this is why he's made this decision to... Yeah, I, th I think probably, absolutely. There's just not the same scope of races available for him that he wants to do and has proven to be, you know, really successful at winning um, available for him anymore. So I suppose he's decided to, you know, stop at the top, which is pretty cool. Yeah, well, best of luck for your new chapter in your life. So you might have heard of World Bicycle Relief. Well, in Africa, every single day, there's 500 million people are walking to school, work or medical clinics and they're spending hours a day on their feet. So what World Bicycle Relief can do is help them with bikes that they build and distribute locally, sell, assembled locally, and that plugs the gap for, for those people to, to hopefully be able to move around quicker. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing charity. And actually this year, we have a collaboration between Philippe Pantone, the clothing brand Romance, and the bike brand Specialized. And they have produced this very, very cool looking bike. It Stunning, is in, it? yeah, it's in the unique sort of artistry and the lines, the colors, the pixels from Philippe Pantone, and it's got SRAM Red E-Tap on it, it's got Roval wheels and the S-Works finishing kit. Now this bike 
very, very nice looking bike is actually going to be up for auction on eBay on November the 17th. And the nice bit of all of this is that all the proceeds from it will go towards the World Bicycle Relief. Well, now let's move on to a bit of a tech special because last week we had a very exciting announcement from one of the partners of our channel. It was Continental with their brand new Grand Prix 5000 tire. Now, this is the new successor to the very popular all-rounder, the Grand Prix 4000 S2. And so popular, in fact, I mean, this box has seen better days because everyone's been fighting for it in the office. Just look at it. Um, talking of which, if you'd like to see a very in-depth feature on this tire, head on over to the GCN Tech page. It's a fantastic video. You'll learn all about this tire. It's actually been 14 years since Continental first released their 4000 series tire. And I think it's fair to say everyone's really been awaiting this update to the design, to the tire, and in particular, a tubeless road option. Yes, so finally Continental does have a tubeless tire that you can go out there and buy. This is not the tubeless version, this is still the, the clincher version, but um, essentially the tubeless version brings to the table everything that the, the older version did, except it's got a airtight liner, it's got a shaped bead, and it's a softer rubber there as well, which basically makes it a lot easier to fit, which is a pretty good thing. So the bottom line is with this new Continental tire, it rolls faster, it is lighter, and it is more puncture resistant. So, sounds pretty good to me. Well, another bit of tech comes from the brand Muckoff, and this is a cleaning product, or actually two cleaning products, for indoor use. Yep, you heard it, indoor use, indoor training. I mean, it's quite counterintuitive, really, to me, but I mean, I, I can understand with the advent of so many more people um, spending a lot of time training indoors. I mean, I, I get that, so I suppose it's just a function of that requirement. Yeah, with these two products we've got the antibacterial equipment cleaner and we also have the sweat protect. So the cleaner obviously is to wipe away our perspiration, our sweat, and then the sweat protect obviously with the salt and everything within our sweat can corrode bolts. So the idea is you spray it on those beforehand and it'll prevent them from corroding. Interesting product. It's not something we've seen before. No, I mean, it makes sense whether we'll be using it or I'll be buying it. I'm not overly sure, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good idea. The Specialized Power Saddle design has proven extremely popular with female cyclists all around the world. However, the quest for an even more comfortable saddle may have come just that little bit closer with Specialized new power design, the Power Mimic. Yeah, this updated design has a number of innovative features in it. The most interesting being this softer foam that's used on the nose, designed to mimic the amount of soft tissue that'll be resting on it, hence the name. Now, Specialized actually claimed that this is their most tested saddle today and it's been truly designed for women. Now, they have four models, starting with their Comp, then the Expert, then their Pro, and then their S-Works. Now, that will start at 80 pounds, all the way through to 220 pounds with the S-Works model. Or in US dollars, we start with $120 all the way through to $300. So this is something that's been out for a couple of weeks now, but since we're doing a little bit of a tech special, we thought we would include it now to have a little chat. Um, new helmet brand, Hexo, they are designing a helmet which is a 3D fit to your head. So effectively the perfect fitting helmet, which sounds pretty good to me. So Hexo, they allow you to scan your head using camera on your iPad. So it's fairly simple to do. Doesn't take very long, few seconds, scan your head and then Hexa will send you back that scan data just because it's quite interesting, I suppose, and then they'll you know, produce you your helmet. Yeah, I mean, they do this by 3D printing it, and they make a hexagonal honeycomb cell in a shell design, and they actually claim that this hexagonal honeycomb structure is 68% better at controlling impact forces in comparison to your sort of standard conventional polystyrene foam helmets. And they do that by kind of dissipating the energy and that impact throughout the cells as they sort of move and change. Now, an average size hexo helmet weighs in just shy of 250 grams. Now it does come in at the top end of the market, but then this is a custom helmet designed specifically to use. It comes in at 349 pounds. Well, to finish our tech special this week, we have a very exciting giveaway from our partner on with their Cloudflow. We have the women's design here and a very nice men's design also. We have five pairs of these to give away and you can enter that by clicking on the link in the description below. But more about the Cloudflow. 
I mean, these are a really popular shoe amongst an awful lot of, certainly pro athletes, age group athletes as well, of course, become something that an awful lot of guys and girls that I know racing have been wearing. I mean, they're, um, yeah, as you say, just a really popular shoe, but with the Swiss engineered design and obviously the really unique structure of their sole with the cloud technology here. Yeah, I mean, this is designed with the idea of being both responsive in terms of sort of absorbing that energy and bouncing off cushioned and also for stability reasons. And it seems to have worked because we all remember Tim Don breaking Indeed. the Ironman record back in 2017 when he ran a marathon time of 2 hours 44.23 after the swim and the bike. And that say. gave him a 7 hours 40... 23. Yeah, there we go. yeah so very impressive. Uh, clearly works for him and you could get your hands on a pair of these. Well now our chance to go through all the great photos that you guys have been sending in to us and we have had an awful lot of pain caves lately. So let's start off with Brian from Edmonton in Canada and he has a huge garage with quite an impressive setup. Can almost not see his Trekham on down there. <laughs> yeah, he's got his, yeah, his Trekham um, on a tax a turbo trainer with a, well it looks like a cross trainer behind it. Um, Weights bench. Yeah, weights bench, big cool. big old mirror so he can check his form whilst he's doing <laughs> it. Um, GTN on the TV. Lots of core equipment, Swiss ball. And not forgetting the the kid's vehicle there in the <laughs> corner and his dog. Uh, very cute. Uh, next one is from Eskil and this one comes from Trondheim in Norway and well... He has a fleet of specialised bikes. Clearly a big specialised fan, isn't he? He's got a specialised shiv up on the wall, then he's got two Specialized Vengeance and, and a tarmac. And it? a tarmac, yeah. Um, and of course, he's got a treadmill there. So, very, very nice. And I did just spot a wheel brand that I'm not too familiar with, UNAS, um, but it appears to have a Norwegian flag on it. So, I'm guessing a Norwegian brand. And I'm guessing a bit like, well, I can sympathize. Being in Norway, a bit like Scotland. A lot of indoor training ahead, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, finally, this one comes in from Pedro Cesson Thurla, and this is from Brazil. And it's another specialized, the Tarmac SL4. Um, on rollers, which is nice to see. It's something that I've never actually used. Have you ever used rollers? I have actually. Oh, yeah, I wish Any I'd good? Learned. Yeah. Well, we don't know, I guess. No, I'm not. I've literally never been on them. So, well, this is something for GTM or possibly going to have to do. Um, but yeah, really making use of space because this is actually his bed right alongside it. Um, and yeah, a few weights in front of it. A little platform that flips yeah. down with, he's got a fan on one below and then laptop on the one above. A few medals and trophies up there. So. Yeah, really cool. Um, as always, please do keep sending in your photos. We're loving all the pain cave setups. We're getting a lot of inspiration here. So just use our photo uploader. Well, now it is time for the race news and a rather short one this week because we just have two events. We have the Miyazaki ITU World Cup over in Japan. And actually, this is the final triathlon of the ITU calendar from the World Cup and the World Triathlon mm -hmm. Series. And it was a tough race because you had a very, very choppy swim which played into the hands of Aurelien Raphael from France. Yeah, former world junior champion, so a really good athlete, but um, also a very strong swimmer. Yeah, I mean, they had a good gap coming out of the swim, just a handful of them, but they were quickly swallowed up on the bike. And then actually a small attack towards the end of the bike, which mm -hmm. again, the Frenchman was a part of. They had about 20 seconds, but again, that really came to nothing as Vicente Hernandez from Spain came powering through on the run. So he took the win overall. And then it was Eli Hemming coming in in second and then Delian Statev taking third. The women's race was effectively came down to a running race, like lots of ITU races do tend to do tend to do. But you had training partners from the US, uh, Summer Cook and Chelsea Burns. They effectively pulled away really quickly in the start of the run. By midway, it was definitely down to two horse race. Uh, Chelsea Burns ended up with second behind her uh, training partner Summer Cook, and Spaniard Miriam Casillas came through for third. So at Challenge Shepparton in Victoria, Australia, we had a half hour man distance race and effectively all came down to a running race. You had twice Kona age group champion Levi Maxwell managing to take his first ever pro win after what appears to have been a really tough couple of years of uh, illness and such for him. So really impressive race there for him. He actually outran fresh off a 12th place finish at Kona, Tim Burkell, fellow Aussie and Another Aussie to round out the podium who was still in the mix off the bike but faded a little compared to those two was Matt Slee and he came third. 
Well, over in the women's race, it was Annabelle Luxford that really went in as quite a clear favourite and she didn't disappoint because on the swim, she actually outsplit quite a few of the men and continued that onto the bike, really increasing her advantage and that time between her and her fellow competitors. She was closed ever so slightly on the run by Grace Theck, but still enough of an advantage to take that win overall with a good nine to 10 minutes between her and second place. That second place finisher was Grace Theck and in third, it was Courtney Gilfillan. Well now it is time for question time and we have had some cracking questions sent in over the past week and kicking off this week, we have this one in from Chris Dizzy. So Chris is asking um, about uh, rest. So before any winter training, what about complete rest? How many weeks can I go without instead of this continuous cycle of always training? And he says that he's got Ironman South Africa in April, um, but assumes that he will also be doing some summer events. Well, this is a really good question, actually, something that I've been trying to get across to a lot of athletes over the years, is it is so important to take a break at the end of a season. It is obviously dependent on how much you've done that season as to how long you take. But if you think about it, you go through this whole cycle of continually training, as you've mentioned, Chris, and you've done your, all your races, there's a lot of stress on the body and for you to just carry on through, I mean, you're eventually going to just burn out and yeah, not maybe perform as best as you can. I mean, we understand that most of us as triathletes have that kind of type A compulsive attitude and we want to do more and we're just used to doing exercise multiple times daily. Um, it's not to say that you have to have complete and utter rest if you just don't want to, but what you don't need to do is have structured training. And I think that's the key thing that you need to differentiate between proper set blocks of training and then just some activity. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's more of a mental break more than anything actually at sure. some points because you're continually on it, you're making these sacrifices, you're so focused. Actually, it's just an opportunity to relax, enjoy time with the family and whatever else it is. And yeah, sure, go out and do some active stuff, oh, biking, absolutely. mountain biking, yeah. but just take the structure away from it. I do understand, I mean, this is the big issue is that you get yourself so fit and in such good shape, it's really hard to back off from that thinking, I've worked so hard for this, but you will actually reap the rewards in the long run. And fitness always comes back a lot quicker than we think it will. Well, our first question rolls us very nicely into the GTN poll, and we want to ask you guys, do you have an end of season break? And it's very simple, yes or no, you can enter that by clicking just above Fraser's head. And we'd love to hear how long a break you do normally take. Um, you can let us know just in the comment section below. Now for last week's poll, we asked you, do you want to race further than an Ironman? Do you, Fraser? Um, no, I don't, quite <laughs> frankly. I've done enough Ironman, so no, that's a long way. But on that note, 27% uh, of people thought that that was an idea for them in the future, and an overwhelming 73% thought, like me, that no one Ironman <laughs> is really quite far. Uh, but we did actually get quite a few people messaging in about Ultramans. Sure. Now, this isn't actually an area I'm that familiar with, um, but we had a few people explaining it to us. So it's a, it's a three-day event, 515 kilometers of multi-sport racing. Which is a long, long way. Yeah, so day one, you normally complete a 10 kilometer swim and Straight into, <laughs> and a 140 into, kilometer yeah, ride. ride. Day yeah. two, a 276 kilometer ride. And then day three, you do an 84 kilometer run. Good old double marathon. <laughs> yeah, and actually this weekend, well no, sorry, today we are on day two of the Ultraman Israel. Yep. So they are, they've they already completed their 10 kilometer swim and their 145 kilometer bike. And today they are doing their 276 kilometer bike and then they have the 84 kilometer run to Morris, so best of luck to everyone out there that's racing that. Okay, and this next question is in from Robin Singh, and he says, hi, what does just above threshold mean? Can you please explain with an example? Now, this is referring to the hill rep session that I did with Susie Cheatham just the other week. Um, and essentially, your lactate threshold is the point at which you start to accumulate more lactic acid than you can get rid of. So you kind of almost become overwhelmed with lactic acid. And you just slowly start slowing down, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of the limiting factor for most people, sure. really. Well, everyone. Um, but we're all different. We are all different. So these lactate thresholds are at different levels. So my lactate threshold may be very different, probably a lot higher than Fraser's, yeah, but no, we'll we won't get into that. on that too much. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> but, um, but yeah, so the idea of doing this threshold work and working at or just above or even just below your lactate threshold, you're, you're hoping to just bump that lactate threshold up. So essentially you're able to work harder 
and find it easier. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's like thinking of us having a ceiling and that ceiling just slowly rises and rises over time. That means that you've just got more ability to go faster. Now it is time for the caption contest and we've got a few uh, good entries here, haven't we? Yeah, well, last week's photo was of Martin Van Riel at the Super League Triathlon, looking very casual coming down to the swim start in his dressing gown. Uh, so yeah, some great captions. We've got this one from Fergal Akala and he said, I wouldn't get out of my bed clothes for anything less than a 70.3. Magnus Alexander has given us, when you packed the wrong swimsuit and swim cap for the race, just play it cool. But our winner is Yannick, and they said, let's get this over with, guys. I've got a massage in 15 minutes. Crack like it. it. Like yeah, it. so you are the winner, Yannick, so please do get in touch, and we will send you a swim cap. Oh. But now for this week's caption comp photo, and this is from Ironman Florida, and you know what? This is not something that I have ever seen before. I haven't seen it happen in a race, but I am aware that it does happen, and I would suggest it's more often than American races. I think I hadn't come across it till I started racing in America. But yeah. either way, it's, it's, it, yeah, to us, it seems a little strange. So these are your wetsuit strippers, your wetsuit helpers. And, uh, For one they, of a better well, yeah. I mean, I normally, yes, they help in transition as I sat on a seat and they just chuck some stuff in a bag, but I've never actually led on a floor as they've pulled the wetsuit off. I'd be me. a little bit worried that they were being careful with my wetsuit, but anyway. Yeah, very true. I mean, this this guy, he mean, he looks like he's enjoying it. Uh, what, what would you say, caption? I mean, I'd get it off quick. Yeah, get me out of here fast. <laughs> yeah, very good. Uh, well, do please uh, drop your captions in the comment section below. Well, that is it for the GTN show this week. And it has been an absolute pleasure having you in this week, Fraser. And now, forever, because you are part of the team. I know, and actually today, the three of us were heading off to Lanzarote to film an awful lot more videos. So keep an eye out for more great content. Yeah, and there's actually three of us now, so we can do some cracking presenter challenges. So stay tuned for those two. Now, if you liked this week's show, hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more videos from GTN, you can subscribe to the channel by just clicking on the globe. Now, if you'd like to see how the Specialized Swift Triathlon Academy members got on out at the Ironman World Championships in Kona, then you can watch that video by clicking just here. And if you want to watch a video where Mark explains to you how to pull... The front crawl stroke. Oh, yeah, of course. Then you need to click that here.